Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Yezro Solar Crank Emergency Radio. This radio was provided to me by Yezro, but I'm not being compensated for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful, I'll put a link to this on Amazon and if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So let's take a look at this. So this could be used for camping, emergencies, you could put it in your car, your RV, your cabin, places like that. So it comes with a USB light. So you plug this into USB and it's for like reading and such. You're not going to illuminate far away with this, but if you want to read something up close like a map or a book, this will work well. We have a micro USB charging cable. Here we have the radio. There's a warranty card and the manual. So there are four different ways this can be powered. You have AAA batteries, which go in here. It has an interior lithium ion battery and it's 2200 milliamp hours. And that charges via micro USB here. It has a solar panel and it has a crank. So for emergency usage, you should probably have batteries in here or at least available to put in here. Probably the best batteries you could put in here would be some like Energizer Ultimate Lithium batteries. Those things can last a really long time and they don't leak. But I would put some decent quality batteries in here. I don't have any decent quality ones right now. I just have these cheapos, but they'll work. But if you're storing this, you might want to keep the batteries out of it, put them in like a plastic baggie or something uh, so they don't leak because they might be in there a long time if you are storing this for emergency use. Now, if you're using this regularly, you're probably replacing the batteries regularly. And then you have the lithium inside and you can charge that up here or you can use the solar or the hand crank. These solar panels can take a long time to charge a battery like this, but they're still useful. So what I would probably do if I was going camping is I would charge up the lithium ion battery before I left. And then when I'm not using the radio, say during the day or whatever, I'll set this out on the picnic table in the sun, and then the sunlight can top off that battery charge. So I wouldn't use solar as primary means, and I'm not just talking about this radio, but anytime you have a battery pack that has a solar panel on it, I wouldn't rely on that to charge it fully in like two hours. It's not going to happen. It can take quite a bit longer, but it's good for passive charging, so you can gain a little bit of charge during the day, and you don't have to do anything for it. Just set this out. And then for emergencies, you also have this hand crank, so you can turn that up to get some power to listen to the radio, the weather radio. Okay, so in the instructions it says, when the battery is used for the first time or has not been used for a long time, like three months, the built-in lithium battery should be fully charged before use. When charging, turn the power switch to AAA. Then it says, read the instructions, heat all warnings, follow all instructions, do not use the apparatus near water, do not use near heat sources, only use attachments specified by the manufacturer, refer all servicing to qualified service personnel, battery usage caution, make sure you put the batteries in correctly, don't expose the batteries to excessive heat, don't expose the device to dripping or splashing. That should be water, I think. And do not place any source of danger on the device, like liquid-filled objects or lighted candles. So we can install AAA batteries here. And we have the lithium-ion AAA mode, so I'll turn it on to AAA mode. So if I want to listen to weather band, so there's a mode selector here. So you have AM, FM, weather band, and weather band alert. And this will automatically alert you if you have bad weather. I don't have a way to demonstrate that right now because there's not a storm going on. But if you want to listen to weather radio, I'll go back one. So it's on weather band. I'll turn the volume on. And the weather band is on this outer portion here. You can look up which band you have in your area, but it's probably easier just to turn it on and then turn this to where you start hearing something. So I'm hearing it here. Northwest wind 5 to 10 miles an hour. Tuesday, mostly sunny. High around 30. West wind 5 to 15 miles an hour. So there's some noise on there. I'm in a basement. I don't know if I'd get a better signal outside. When you're using weather radio, you want to know what the weather is and if you're in danger. It's not like you're uh, paying a lot of money for some digital CD and you want it to sound perfect. You know, as long as it's communicating the information, it's doing the job. So. That's one thing I like about this is it has an analog dial on here so you can really tune it in because it's better having a poor signal than no signal at all when you're dealing with something like a weather band radio. So we can also run on lithium ion mode there. And if you want to charge this, you want to turn it to AAA mode and then you take the crank out and you can crank it with this. So if your batteries are dead, you can use this method. So I feel like the hand crank would be the last resort. But in an emergency, if this is what you have, that's what you use. So we can try AM too. 
I don't know if I'll be able to tune in on this very well, but. There's a sports station, I think. Let's try FM. Turn that up just a little. Turn that off before I get a copyright strike. Then we did weather band, and then we have the alert where it'll alert you to bad weather. So this also has MP3 capability. So you can put in a micro SD card like so. So the controls here are just forward, back, play, pause. So it doesn't have shuffle on it as far as I know, and you can't do chapters, there's no display. I think this would probably be best to put some music on that you might calm your kids with, or maybe you put podcasts on here or books on tape, although they're not technically tape anymore, obviously. Um, but you could put some things like that. You could put music on it too, but as an option that is there. And you can also stick in a flash card. These are nice, these little short ones you could stick in here, and you could put music on these, and they don't take up much room. So let's uh, do a sampling of this. So I've loaded some royalty-free music on here for this test. So let's see, I'll turn this on, and then I'll press this button here, and that'll turn green. And now we're listening to music off of this. Same thing with this, we can plug that in here. Have the same music on it. That's a handy feature. It's obviously not made to you know put tons of albums on in your whole collection, but this isn't an audiophile device, it's more of an emergency device. So if we look back at this side here, we have a headphone port, so you can plug that into headphones. It has output, so you can use this to charge your phone or other devices. We have input for charging it from USB, and it came with the cable. It did not come with the power adapter, but I'm guessing most people have like 20 of those power adapters, or you can plug this into a computer to charge it, or a wall port. I mean, there's lots of options there for cars. And then you have your micro SD and your USB for the flash drive for music. So I can demonstrate this here on the output with this reading light they sent. Let's see, how do I turn that on? Probably, there we go. I just triggered it with this. I just switched it once and it turned on. It may have needed to turn the port on. Tried that too. So if this, if you plug something in here and it's not charging, just give that a toggle and that should work. So you have that light. It also worked on here. I don't know if you're supposed to charge from the music one though, but there's obviously power going to it. So that's pretty handy. So this has a flashlight on it here. So it has two modes. It has solid and flashing. So I did email the manufacturer about this because the uh, manual said it had five modes in it. Uh, I think it had, no, three modes. It had three light modes and two flashing modes, but it just has constant now. They've changed the chip in here or something, which is actually fine by me because when you have multiple modes on, you have to switch back and forth between them. I, I don't need to do that most of the time. I just want the light on or the flashing for an emergency, but you know, they're both fine. I don't care. When you want an emergency light, you just want some light. So I'm not picky. So I'll turn the light off so we can get a better look at this light. And then to turn the light off, you hold it down like that. I do have the glow of my computer screen in front of me, but. So here's the flashlight, and here's the flashing mode. Hold it down to turn it off. And I plugged in that reading light. I'll just toggle the power switch. There we go. That's the reading light there. It's a pretty even light. This also has an SOS switch on it. So if I turn this on, it will flash this light and play that siren sound. So if you're out hiking and you got lost, you could turn that on so you don't have to yell and ruin your voice and burn a lot of energy. So, you know, it's probably a little annoying, but that's kind of the whole point of it is that it will get people's attention. So if you're lost out hiking, you could set this kind of up on a tree branch, you know, maybe facing towards the way people would potentially come rescue you. And you don't have to sit right near it. You know, you can be 20 foot away from it and the people looking for you will still find you. 
and it also has the light too. So if you didn't want the sound, you could just use this flasher here. And if you want the sound and the light, you can use this. So I think this is a nice radio to have for emergency use. You could put it in a bug out bag, a car, an RV. If you put this in the car, you want to store it somewhere cool in the car. So you wouldn't want this on your dash. You could put it under your seat. I probably wouldn't put this under the driver's seat. I wouldn't put anything under the driver's seat. If this rolled out and got under your brake pedal, that could be a dangerous situation. But you could maybe put it under the passenger seat. You could put it in the middle console. I'd probably put it at the bottom of the middle console to keep it cooler. You could put this in your trunk where you keep the spare tire. That's relatively cool most of the time. And like I said earlier, you could store this in an RV, you know, cabin, things like that. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.